Every time a comet's tail changes shape, the questions begin. Is it a breakup, a new jet, or just an optical illusion? The 3 I Atlas is showing kinks and knots, sometimes with a broad curve, sometimes with a faint straight streamer. The reason? It's growing two different tails at once. We unpack the difference between dust and ion tails and reveal how nucleus rotation and solar wind pressure can sculpt the sky. No hype, just what the images really suggest. Why would a comet's tail change shape from one image to the next? If you've wondered whether that means a breakup, new jets, or just viewing angle, you're in the right place. In this video, we'll unpack the main drivers, dust versus ion tails, solar wind pressure, and rotation, and show you what to look for in the latest three iAtlas frames. No hype, just what the images likely indicate, what's uncertain, and what the next observations could confirm. Why a comet can grow two different tails at once. In the latest frames, three. iAtlas shows a kinked streak in one shot and a straighter, fainter streamer in another. Why would a single object draw two signatures on the sky? Start with the two kinds of tails a comet can carry. A dust tail is made of tiny solid grains released from the surface. Sunlight pushes on those grains with gentle pressure, so the trail tends to bend and arc along the comet's path. An ion tail is different. Gas escapes, get stripped of electrons by sunlight, and those charged atoms get picked up by the solar wind, which is a stream of particles flowing out from the sun. That tail often looks straighter and sits slightly off the line of motion because the wind sets its direction. Here's where it gets tricky. The dust and ion tails do not have to point the same way, and they rarely brighten in sync. In one image, the curved dust tail can dominate. Minutes later, a modest change in background, exposure, or the solar wind can make the straight ion tail stand out, while the dust arc looks steady or even fades. That mismatch can make back-to-back -back shots look like two different comets when it's just two materials responding to two forces. A clear example showed up with Comet Neowise in 2020. The curved dust tail looked warm and broad in most photos, while a thin, straight ion tail appeared offset. Short exposures captured the bright inner curve and hid the faint blue line. Longer exposures pulled out the straight streamer and the subtle structures within it. That same exposure effect can play out in three eye atlas frames. So one photographer can catch a kinked, bright arc and another can reveal a dim, rigid line a few minutes later. Solar wind conditions add another layer. The wind speed and direction vary with solar activity. When a high-speed stream from a coronal hole sweeps past, the magnetic field carried by that flow can tug the ion tail into a new orientation within hours. That does not require any change at the nucleus. It's the environment shifting the charged gas downstream. Dust, by contrast, reacts to sunlight and orbital geometry, so it evolves on slower timescales and keeps that graceful curve even while the ion tail pivots. Think of dust as confetti in a flashlight beam. The confetti drifts outward and curves as it spreads. Ions behave more like smoke caught by a fan that changes speed. When the fan gusts, the smoke line bends quickly. When the fan quiets, the line relaxes. Grain size matters too. Radiation pressure, the push from sunlight, hits small particles harder than big ones. Tiny grains get shoved fast and make thin, sharp features. Larger grains lag, spread wider, and hold brightness longer. This size sorting builds a broad, slow-changing dust tail. If you see a steady arc that barely shifts over a night, large grains likely play a role. Meanwhile, the ion tail, built from much lighter ions, shows the most rapid geometry changes because it is tied to the wind and its magnetic field. Apply these rules to 3i Atlas. If a straight, slightly offset tail brightens or swings while the curved arc stays about the same, 
A working hypothesis is that the ion tail is responding to a wind change rather than a breakup. A sudden kink in the straight tail, followed by a clean section downstream, would also fit normal ion tail behaviour. In contrast, a dust tail that fractures into multiple, persistent arcs would trigger questions about new dust sources. So, the mini payoff is simple. Sharp differences from one frame to the next can be normal behaviour. Two tails are writing two stories at once, each with its own clock and compass. If your next image shows a faint straight line where the last one showed a bright arc, that can be the ion tail speaking up while the dust tail keeps its slower rhythm. Next, we test whether rotation, focused jets, or true fragmentation could be behind the sharper kinks and knots some frames hint at. Rotation, jets, or breakup. What the structures really suggest. One frame shows a kink and a knot. The next shows a faint split. Does that mean 3i Atlas is shedding fragments or just rotating? The quick answer is that both signals can look similar in still images. To sort them, we need to talk about jets and rotation in simple terms and then test what the newest frames actually show. Jets are narrow streams of gas and dust that shoot from active spots on the comet's surface. Sunlight warms a patch, ices vaporize, and the escaping gas drags grains with it. Nucleus rotation is the spin of the solid core. As the comet turns, different jet sources face the sun, switch on, or fall into shadow. That spin paints patterns in the near nucleus region and along the tail. A rotating jet can produce a spiral or corkscrew trace when seen edge on, or a set of kinks when seen at an angle. Here's the challenge. A compact bright clump in the tail can look like a fragment that split off, yet it can also be a denser puff from a jet that rotated into view. Viewing geometry matters. If we watch from slightly different angles on different nights, structures align or blur. Exposure time matters too. Short exposures favour the bright inner coma and near nucleus knots. Long exposures connect those knots with fainter filaments and can reveal straight ion tail strands that mimic a split. A useful case study comes from Comet 67 P. Churyumov, Gerasimenko. Its rotating jets produced hour-to-hour -hour changes, including corkscrew textures and episodic puffs, even when the nucleus stayed intact. The lesson is that rotation plus localized activity can generate sharp features without any breakup. For 3 I Atlas, a similar rotating jet scenario is a reasonable first check because it explains rapid repeating changes without needing a new body to appear. Another clue is a tail disconnection event. That is when part of the ion tail appears to detach, leaving a gap followed by a newly formed straight tail. The mainstream view is that this comes from a change in the solar wind's magnetic field, not a split in the nucleus. When the field flips or a boundary sweeps past, charged particles get stripped from the magnetic connection and the ion tail reforms aligned with the new field. If you see a clean gap followed by a crisp, straight segment that supports a magnetic reconfiguration rather than structural failure of the comet. So, what should we check in the three I Atlas images? Track a suspected condensation, the point-like bright spot, that seems separate from the nucleus. If it maintains a consistent offset and moves with the same apparent motion as the comet over several nights, that is stronger evidence for a fragment. If instead it fades, elongates along the tail, or shifts position with changing exposure and processing, a jet-induced knot is more likely. Watch the orientation. Features that stay tied to the tail axis and stretch downstream usually belong to the flow, not to a detached chunk. Photometry helps too. A photometric light curve is a brightness record over time. If jets rotate in and out of sunlight, the total brightness often rises and falls 
with a repeatable period. A periodic light curve supports a rotation-driven pattern. No clear period does not prove there is no rotation, but it weakens the case that jets alone set the structure you see. Now, apply these tests to the newest frames. Are we seeing a compact condensation that persists and follows the comet night to night? Or a stationary knot that sits on the tail axis and morphs with wind changes? If the features reset after a disconnection light gap, the solar wind likely played the lead role. If they recur at the same rotational phase, jets fit well. The mini payoff is this. Most rapid frame-to-frame -frame shifts in three eye atlas point to rotation and changing solar wind conditions. A breakup stays a hypothesis until a co-moving secondary is measured across multiple nights. With working explanations in hand, the next step is to watch for a stable offset companion, check for a repeating brightness period, and keep an eye on space weather updates that could flip the ion tail again. Conclusion. The fast changing shapes in 3i Atlas fit the mainstream view. Two tails responding to different forces, plus a spinning nucleus that turns jets on and off. A breakup remains a hypothesis unless a co-moving secondary condensation is confirmed across nights. Watch new images from NASA and ESA solar observatories and from community observatories. Compare the straight offset strand to the broader curved arc. Log any knot that keeps the same separation and motion as the nucleus. Stay curious and evidence first. Careful notes on angle, exposure and timing will help. What we learn now will tighten how we read the next interstellar visitor's first light.